At first glance, a racing wheel doesn't look much different than a standard wheel. But there are subtle differences in the angles and contours that set it apart. The dimensions give it the strength to handle the extreme forces of racing and to corner well at high speeds. The driver will get the trophy and the credit, but a good set of wheels is behind every win. The process starts with high strength, low alloy steel, which is a very stable material. The first of a series of die presses gives the center disc a concave profile and forms lug holes. The next press punches a hole for the hub and others called windows. Windows help cool the brakes while maintaining strength where needed. Rings are stamped around the windows. This is called coining. The rings give the windows a nicer look and the action compresses the steel to strengthen the part. The next press is critical. It forces the disc into a bowl shape and gives it precise dimensions to accommodate brakes. The specific angles also reinforce the part. It's taken a lot of punching and pressing, but the center disc of this racing wheel has now taken shape. A smaller press now punches out the lug holes mentioned earlier. These holes will allow the wheel to be mounted to a vehicle. Then the center disc goes for a spin as a series of tools trim it. The part is now complete. To make the rim, a machine unwinds coiled steel and rollers iron out the curl. A mechanical arm maintains the slack as the flattened steel goes under the knife. The blade, called a shearer, cuts the steel to length and stamps product information onto it in one swoop. The steel is then wound between three rollers to twist it into a band. The band is then placed into the jaws of a welder, which fuses the two ends together. The metal is then slid into a machine that scrapes off excess material from the weld. It's still warm, so it can be easily removed. Now the band comes under some serious pressure as a machine forces it around dies at both ends to create flares. This rack transfers the rim to a series of rollers which shape its inner ledge. This part of the rim is called the bead seat and it will be attached to the bead wall of the tire. The rim is trimmed to make the edges neater. This finishes off the part. The center disc is placed loosely in the rim. As the rim spins, the outside is heated with a torch. This causes the steel to expand and the center disc drops further into the rim. As the rim cools, it contracts, shrinking to the center part. The two parts are now interconnected and a weld makes the bond permanent. Threaded holes are drilled into the wheel to attach valve stems. As it exits, the drill turns in reverse so it doesn't ruin the threads. After a fresh coat of paint, a thread locking adhesive is applied to the stems which are then screwed into the holes. The valves will be used to add air to the tires. The wheel rotates as a small roller paints a stripe onto the rim. Then a press stamps a number onto it to identify this wheel. And now this wheel is on a fast track to the finish line. Let's hope it's still attached to the car, though.